I'm Professor Graham Yorston. Welcome to 5-Minute Mental Health Disorders. In this episode, I'll be talking about a condition that has just about the strangest name in the whole of medicine, exploding head syndrome. Exploding head syndrome is actually a relatively benign sleep disorder in which people experience a loud or frightening noise like a thunderclap, gunshot or bomb going off just as they are falling asleep or waking up. It is usually very brief and not painful, but understandably it often produces a strong emotional reaction. Around 10% of people also experience visual disturbances like flashes of light or lightning. Some people also experience heat, strange bodily sensations and tingling that goes up into the head, often described as electricity. People may wake up feeling confused or distressed and they may have myoclonic jerks and a racing heart. Some people also have the sensation that they have stopped breathing and they have to make a deliberate effort to breathe again. The sounds are a special form of auditory hallucination, known as hypnagogic hallucinations if they occur when you're falling asleep, and hypnopompic hallucinations if you're waking up. How often they occur varies widely. Some people experience them once or twice only, other people have them in clusters over a few weeks or months, but most people have them on an occasional basis for the whole of their lives. At their worst, they can occur several times per night. They can be brought on by stress, jet lag, and other interruptions to the circadian rhythm, and are more common in people who have other sleep disorders, especially sleep paralysis, and people who are natural night owls, known as late chronotypes. It was previously thought to be rare and to predominantly affect middle-aged and older people, but in recent studies, 18-20% to of young people reported having experienced EHS at least once in their lives. The French philosopher René Descartes is the first known person to have had exploding head syndrome. In 1691, his biographer said, He had a new dream in which he believed he heard a sharp and shattering noise, which he took for a clap of thunder. The fright it gave him woke him directly, and after opening his eyes, he perceived many sparkling lights scattered about the room. Descartes interpreted this as a dream from God that confirmed his life's mission to introduce a new philosophical method to the world. In 1876, Silas Weir Mitchell, an American neurologist, reported a patient who had a nocturnal sensation of a pistol shot, which he called a sensory shock. It was then largely forgotten, but reported again in 1920 as a snapping of the brain by Welsh psychiatrist Robert Armstrong Jones, who considered it to be a symptom of neurasthenia, or early melancholia, what we would now call depression. Its current evocative name was given by British neurologist John Pierce in 1989. Because EHS has only recently come to medical attention, there has been very little research on it and the cause remains unknown. A number of theories have been proposed to explain it, from migraine and temporal lobe epilepsy, to sudden shifts in middle ear anatomical structures or pressure in the eustachian tubes, even post-traumatic stress disorder and antidepressant discontinuation syndrome. The most compelling explanation to me, however, is that it occurs as a result of dysfunction of the reticular activating system, a network of neurons located in the brainstem with inputs from the ears and eyes and projections to several brain areas that are involved in the transition between waking and sleeping and the switching off of muscle activity in rapid eye movement sleep. As many doctors are unfamiliar with this syndrome, EHS may be misdiagnosed as anxiety, nightmares, hypnic headaches or PTSD. For most people, a simple explanation of what is happening is reassuring and no treatment is needed. For more severe cases, a number of medications have been tried, but as yet, there have been no systematic clinical trials. Tricyclic antidepressants have been reported to decrease the frequency and intensity of attacks. Calcium channel blockers used for migraine may also be useful, and anticonvulsants are reported to have reduced the intensity of EHS sounds from loud bangs to much softer buzzing sounds without achieving complete remission. Neuromodulation with transcranial magnetic stimulation is also being investigated as a possible treatment, but it's early days. So there we are, five minutes on exploding head syndrome. I hope you enjoyed this one, and if so, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to click the notification bell to be kept up to date with all the latest videos. Bye for now.